a core matchup might not be the best, but everything else I, I look in the game looks pretty damn good. Sure, Decrepify can be a little bit annoying to play around, but with spin being so prevalent in a lot of the way that these builds do work anyway, yeah, looks looks like a good matchup for him. And hey, we've got a lot of fun because we also do have Seb on his Magnus. And then we also have Topson playing one of his like most signature heroes that I feel like I always see him trying to sneak into a draft <laughs> of Ricky. So yeah, some some real good fun on their side and some crazy scale potential, right? Like look at OG if they get it to super late game. It's like, oh my God. Yeah, I don't know how you deal with that if you're brain. But, you know, like they said earlier on the panel, they have to make sure that this Ursa is going to snowball. And, you know, we do yeah. have Stominen on his Earth Spirit. Do you think he's going to be able to assist and make enough things happen? Uh, let's take a look at these lanes. Um, I, I think that they can actually do a pretty decent amount with him because he can, this lane for the uh, for mid, like Pugna can actually apply a decent amount of pressure because you can force the wave out so, force the wave in so hard versus a Ricky. I think that they could look to actually pressure these towers really early on. I look at OG and they are pretty lacking at just this deep push in general and you are playing versus this, this Pugna and Coddle where you can refresh, you know, Chakra for the blast, double blast on these towers. You have Ty in the front line. I think I think that Brave Brain does kick up the pace and they're able to set a good pace of just taking these buildings and get a good advantage. There's a chance, but you know, th there's always the X factor of Magnus that just makes games really stressful about breaking high grounds. So I still definitely I have to favor the OG draft. They just they love late game. They love the late game. <laughs> That definitely makes sense. They like to keep their fans on the edge of their seat as well, but uh, do have a very high pace draft coming out from the side of Brame here, yeah. as you said. So, be very interesting to watch. Of course, you know, SSA Spartan, he's on his Keeper of the Light. Keeper of the Light, of course, did get some changes, though, so not going to be quite as, uh, quite as good as he was before. I believe there's no longer a recall, correct? No, there is not. However, your Illuminate can heal, so it can... It could change a little bit, right? Like, it could maybe work decently with the draft with the heal instead of recall. But it, it all depends on how they can set it up as dominant. He'll be able to roll in, snag the one, so they will get three bounties on the side of Brame. That feels pretty good. It's a nice start going out to the side of Brame, but uh, they're going to need to do even more than that. So we'll be watching yeah. with a lot of interest. I'm curious to see how the lanes are going to go. I want to see how this five Brewmaster does versus the Tide, because he doesn't really need to do like the craziest amount, because Juggernaut in this matchup is just, you can actually set up for a lot of kills. Mm -hmm. We'll probably see some, maybe some rotations. We'll watch Saxa, what he does, because he did start with boots on this Willow. So that tells me he's going to be, he's going to be checking ruins. He's going to be shifting around his positioning a lot in this game. I definitely think that's where Saxa really shines, is being able to be very mobile and kind of put that pressure down on the map and make it known. So be interesting to watch yeah. for sure. They dropped the brambles down. They looked like they were trying to maybe go for Stoman because he rolled in under tower, but Ooh. didn't quite get a chance. <laughs> Did look like a pretty good opportunity, but... Nope, everybody's just chilling for now. Stoman is going to roll on over here, make sure he blocks up the camp. Nicely done. Very nicely done. Watching both sides. Yep, dire side also. OG blocked the small camp pull as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be watching mid quite a bit because, you know, Topson, I feel like some of these games, he really forces the Ricky. Maybe it's a, either for a good matchup or just an overall good thing in the game. Because mm -hmm. this game, I see a lot of reasons for smokescreen. This lane matchup does not sound fun, though. No, this definitely is very difficult for him. He's going to constantly be getting blasted. He's going to be decrapified. Uh, but of course, you know, like you said, OG, they play for the late game. They've got something up their sleeves or in their pockets in some cases, right? With this little yeah. Ricky, but uh, which does have to be careful here. He's playing nicely, dodging a couple of the blasts here with either like a blink strike to blink past it or a tricks to the trade. He's just trying to maximize and not take too much damage on this Ricky. Focus taking a lot of damage. Bottom. He's got two of these brambles, but uh, it's going to be just fine here. Does need to be a bit careful, especially with that shockwave pulling right back in. That's a fun combo. Skewer through those those uh, brambles for yeah. sure can cause a lot of pressure and cause a lot of problems as the courier. Sox will get it. Well, there goes the boots, unfortunately. Playing Ursa versus these little roots are also quite annoying. You're just like, you're going to land until you can't do anything. You, you click your after or shock when you're in the root and you just stand still. You do a little <laughs> jump in motion, jump in place. Yeah, I can't do a but whole lot. so far, stuff. these lanes, they're, they're doing oh, pretty good in the last uh -oh. hit department. Oh, no, looks Ooh. like Spartan's going to be fine here. They wound up here with the Shadow Realm, hoping maybe they could get that angle, but not going to find it this time around. So still no first blood, but plenty of chances to try to get it. Yeah, Seb a little off the mark there. Spartan had 10 wand charges or 10 stick charges too, so he knew he had to pull him back if they did want to get that kill. 
And yeah, the last hits, though, I'm, I'm checking them out. Look, even like, Tidehunter is even doing really well. They're forcing a lot of spins up from Ana up top, too. So lanes at the moment looking hot for Brame. And that's exactly how they need to be playing this here and making that space, trying to take towers early and allow this Ursa to really uh, come online. Yeah, something I've seen from a lot of these uh, mid laners when they have more spam oh. ability than the opposing. Oh. So that's happening. Bottom does get taken out finally. I feel like that's, that's got to be like tradition, though, for Brame at this point, right? You know, SSA yeah. Spartan usually the first one to go down here. That is yeah, just no, definitely. position five. Yeah, I was mentioning, I wish, uh, sometimes I'm seeing these mid laners lately, when they can super push the mid in, they actually run in and take the opposing three-minute bounty run if you have a bottle. I think Wish can actually go for stuff like that this game, because he's playing versus Ricky. Like, Ricky's not going to go for the same bottle right. as him, and he can have that good rune control with pushing lane in. There's so many runes to, that are available now as yeah, well. There is. It's actually wild. We're talking about in the back room about how, you know, that five minutes comes up and the night comes through and you're like, oh, I feel like I should be doing something right, Bob, but there's nothing there. Nice dodge. Definitely feels a little awkward. Because right? it, it does feel like there should be some big thing, but it's just, it's just not there anymore. As we see the water rune will get claimed. Sox will get the bottom one. Wish fills up his bottle on that top one. And a little bit more pressure here over in this mid lane. It's just tossing out a couple hits on the tower, but uh, not too far behind here over here on Topson, really. Up top, Stolman. Top this time able to get him. Yeah, down he goes to the spin of the humble god. Uh, but there, I, I, it still continues to be the same thing. Like on a CS, 13 to the 26 of the Tide Hunter. Skylark, he's gotten the start that he wanted to. He's already almost got the hood finished up too, so he's feeling very confidently just standing up here. It's because of it's because of that support duo, right? It's mm -hmm. it's the fact that he has the brewmaster with the jug that makes it just you can't threaten a tide hunter at all with the jug spin. Well, normally if you had any other range support, the constant harassment into a spin will probably net a kill a lot of the time. So Noto's doing his best up there with what he's given. I'm sure they calculated this a bit, knowing the matchups. I'm yeah, sure I, they, they chose to make it the uh -oh. five as well, well, right? Yes, they did. Ooh, that shockwave dragging back focus. Do they have enough though? The shadow round, the boop comes out and down goes the bear. And then the mid lane, the roll Nicely in done. coming out over here on tops and he's immediately going to try to go and just circle away. So, and then throwing out a couple more hits, but he is indeed out of regen right now. So that's going to be a bit rough. Top lane Skylark is going to be able to just teleport on out. There's no way to cancel that TP right now. He's feeling absolutely fine. Yep, TP's to the tower as well, so he can stay up there and continue to get that experience. Oh, we the, see again mid. The roll down goes Topson with a big hit from Wish. Very nice. I like I like seeing him making moves around the catapult. Unfortunately, their catapult did die, so they can't actually turn this into a bit of a push, but continuing to apply pressure and some good root, good moves from Stolman in so far. These three lanes continue to get this good farm, even though OG, they have found themselves three kills. We are seeing just the overall power of these heroes in their positioning of what they're up against. It's looking good. I also like the fact that- And root that, control. Oh yes, that's very, very important, especially when you have a Pugna here. But I like the yeah. fact that Brame is really just playing their style of Dota still, you know? They said that the one team that they're a little bit worried about was of course OG, but that hasn't deterred them from just playing super aggressive. Yeah, I like that they they even like just put it out there, the way that they open up their draft, right? Just mm -hmm. the Earth Spirit straight into the Pugna, that just means, that's a kind of a statement. You're going for a certain strategy right away inside of the game. Stominan making his way over to the top here. Got no tail and humble god. Spins coming out again. You talk about him just being so tanky. Able to do a whole heck of a lot. Stominan looking for the brawl. He's going to be able to connect it over onto No Tail. Skylark making his way over. Would love to get the final hit. And down goes No Tail. As Wish again just pushed back here in this middle lane. Yeah, very, very nicely done. 2k lead. Seeing Soxa, he's starting to get those sack, uh, stack start. I almost said Sox, stack, Soxa, Stacksa? Stacksa? Stacksa, okay. Stacksa. So like Stacksa <laughs> is getting the stacks, you know, because he's got that Magnus. They've got this Empower that's going to be kicking in for their double cores. Those will be at the ready as, ooh, mid. Yeah, that was a little Ouch. close there, but uh, they do have the ward on the side. They were aware that, of course, SSA Spartan was sitting off on the side, and uh, you saw Topson had already kind of bent for the dodge and had no tail, of course, right behind him. So he had a blink. Ooh. Available. Oh, but they're being annoying. Look, even Spartan comes mid. He just continues to blast to refresh the shock, uh, shocker, the blast from the Pugna too, and just even cancel the salve from Topson. They want this early tower. They want to get into enemy jungle because they know, you know, we're playing versus Magnus. There's going to be some stacks of foot. Mm -hmm. They want to start getting this invasion going, start getting their advantage even more so. 
Bottom lane looks like the Willow was considering just teleporting out. Found themselves a little treat there. Mid. But over in the mid lane, the kick back over on the side. They take tail, no tail. Now Stolman, he's got to try to run away here from Topson. He's not going to be able to do it. The life drain comes out, but there's a blink target off to the side. Spartan is going to help allow Topson to run away. Oh, and he, it, that blink does give away the fact that there's a ward, but he actually checks the wrong spot. It's just out of range of that ob. Spartan knows it's there, though. He's probably going to buy another sentry to take it out, but it's in between both sentries right now, which is quite nice for the side of OG, at the least. I do love That's this tower. strat, though. Yeah, just constantly just giving the chakra magic over to Wish, ripping down the tower, and like you said, they pull out that sentry and yep. immediately do ward. It's when you see that jump from the Ricky, you you know, like, wait, how the hell is he seeing me in the tree line? So, nicely done, good awareness. And they will force even the jug. Even Ana has to go TP back to base because of Skylark's pressure. And look at these tasty stacks that they can They're pick up now. The that feels so this bad right now. Socks have worked hard to go and put up these stacks. Gotta protect them, guys. I mean, perfect stuff so far from Brim, honestly. Sure, they've given up a couple kills here and there, but the overall, the way that they're, their game plan, it's it's looking really solid right now. Just invading, knowing that the stacks are there, putting the pressure onto mid tower. Now we'll probably see Wish go toward top, apply pressure there soon. Well, looks like he may be trying to get a kill first with Stolman in. Well, he's got the Aether Lens completed, the roll on over here towards the Ricky, but not going to be able to quite follow up. Now Stolman has to retreat. I think about going back in though, you can see the pings. Skylark just They're really doing just trying to take advantage tight under of things. how weak OG is at the moment. Like they just OG cannot fight back. Like they have to pretty much like bring like the Magnus and the Willow, it feels like, to fight versus the Earth Spear and the Pugna. Like these two can actually apply so much pressure onto the map. And now we're seeing OG make the move. The Magnus is starting to make the way over. They're getting a little sick of Wish's shenanigans. <laughs> the little green gobbo there. I guess he's a skeleton, right? Not yeah. quite a goblin. It's okay, it kind of looks like a goblin though. Right, doesn't he? Reminds me of Jenkins. But uh, top of the lane, <laughs> they throw down the brambles. Soxa immediately goes into the Shadow Realm, throws out the Cursed Crown. We'll be able to stop Skylark in his tracks, but it did feel a little bit close for that little fairy. Just, I mean, I'm just looking at the way the map is positioned at the moment. This is just, this is so excellent for Brain. Like, Spartan's able to chill bottom, bottom and farm. Earth is farming in the jungle, fine. Tidehunter is pressuring top gathering creeps as, and also pressuring the tower. Well, OG, they're on the full defensive. Everyone's kind of sticking around each other. They're not able to really make their own aggressive moves. They're having to be responsive. This is, this is a good start here. Brain needs to keep this up as, you know, we, we know that that looming late game will eventually hit when those empowers do get in, but this is, this is some really good stuff. Focus is getting pretty close to his battle fury already. Smoke coming out from the side of OG. They're gonna see if they can make something happen with these trio. Yeah, Brew is six, Soxa just short of the six. He really wants it versus Pugna. It adds a big element to just kill the Pugna during Decrepify. What else is going on? Skylark is, of course, taking that top tower. The roll in from Stoman, and the teleports are coming out. That's a big silence coming through here. Followed up. Oh, but they have the Ravage. Even though they have that Terrorizer, they're going to follow up. Down goes Wish. These Brambles holding them into place, trying to use that Bedlam in as well. But Skylark is very tanky. Curse Crown will proc, though. Stoman now running himself out. Stopson clicking away over here at Skylark. No tail. To go for a little bit of a dive here. Does not have that split already, though. It already went down during the earlier portion of the fight, so they do manage to collect on the Brewmaster. Okay, but chaos caused. That's OG coming back in the game quite significantly. They bring Ana down bottom too, gets a kill with the Omni Slash onto the Coddle. So, all in all, really good, really good move from OG. Great smoke, use of both ultis. The Willow just hitting six for that Terrorize there too, perfectly done. So, Ravage kind of wasted there for Brim and OG benefits quite heavily. Definitely a move that was necessary. Again, we've yet to see Seb come out in here with the uh, RP just yet, so they still have that threat, but they're gonna respond with their own smoke gank here, and there is a double damage over in the bottom rune spot. I'm sure they're expecting someone to show up. In fact, Topson will oblige the roll in the life drain, and oh, down beautiful. goes Topson. Oh, and then uh, SSA Spartan doing classic oh. SSA Spartan things where he runs up a side by himself right into the enemy core. I'm not sure you want to fight this, Brame. Dominant's considering. Trying to contest. Yeah, they really want to try to contest this triangle because they, they know how weak OG is. Like, Brewmaster ults down, Omni Slash is down, Willow ults down. Like, they want to try to invade this triangle, get rid of these stacks. Ooh, they're going least for the roll. Pressure. Seb runs away. Everyone's just grouped up within this. Oh, the stacks! And they're doing it. They're starting to. 
They have to contest this here. You see Seb getting into position. Nice blinding lights. Domin and rolling on out. Skylark is still here. Wish over on the back lines. Getting the life drain off. Over onto Dark Willow. Needs to be careful though, because they drag right back and trick the kids. Doing a lot. RP comes through as well. Wish goes down. And now it looks like they'll be able to claim themselves a pelt of a bear as the rest of Brame on the run. Ooh, Thompson. He was hoping he could grab Stoneman in here. Not going to be able to quite find it, but he'll find Spartan instead and chase after him. Get himself a double kill. Stoneman running now from Ana. Oh, the block comes out. Down goes the Earth Spirit. And now it is just the tanky Skylark who is left. And it's not looking like he's going to survive this. Although they look like they'll back off a little bit here, but... I don't know. Teleport's coming out. The buyback from Stoneman, and they want this kill on no till They need to get something from this. So they will be able to collect that kill on the position five. But look at this. Look at Thompson. Look at Ana Socks. And they're coming right back in He's again. In. They get the Omni slash off. And down goes Stoneman. And Skylark now chasing after them is silenced up. But again, he's a big tanky boy. Love to put some more damage. They throw out that blast. And they just don't have anything to cancel out this teleport from Ana. So he is out. No problem here. Socks is going to be able to flit those little wings away. But, but hey, take a look. They still He's have got his the eye on the prize. <laughs> Skylark, he's like, I don't care. We all died. I'm still taking them. Thompson needs to be OG. very careful here. They're going to try to go back in. Thompson looking at Wish with the goo goo eyes. He'd love to get a kill here. Spartan, though, needs a little bit of assistance. They do manage to use the Decrepify. Focus coming back around. I hear a Ravage going on on the other side. Oh, No Tail goes down while we're just watching as they chase after Thompson. He wants this kill so bad, Fog. Oh, so close. It doesn't look like he's going to be able to get it. Look at Spartan. He wants that. Soxa, though, is going to go down here to the big old bear. Ana slicing away over here, over at Focus, spinning, trying to do anything he can, but there it is. There's a little battery coming out from Wish as he keeps him alive. And now Ana, he's left pretty much alone. There's seven nearby, but there's not much that he can do. Thompson jumping right back in again. Does have that shroud as he chases after Wish, but he cannot get this kill. And Skylark oh again just swinging around in the middle of all of them, throwing out the taunt, says, come and get me, OG, if you dare. And RP's back up in 10 seconds, and I'm pretty sure we had RP start the entirety of that last two-minute fight that kind of just went on. And, man, you know, this is what we want to see, though, from these teams. Brame is bringing the battle back. Oh, you know OG's going to bring the battle back to you, so I love that they're just attempting to go for that high ground there. They take away most of the Ancients, still two of the big ones, but some good stuff. Even though they all got wiped, they're still persistent to make their way back up there. But now... Ana got a lot of space from this, and so did Topson, to be honest. They got a lot of the big kills. Topson actually has the defusal. I, it felt like he was a lot more behind in this game, but now he's going to be able to do some damage. The coddle is just straight food. Every time poor Spartan shows his face, he's just going to pretty much instantly die to Topson. I'm pretty sure Spartan is very used to that, though, to be quite honest. That's true. <laughs> he is definitely the uh, long-suffering support on the side of Brame. But, uh, yeah, you know, I like the fact that, you know, these skirmishes keep breaking out. I don't even know if you can call them skirmishes at this point, right? Because they last for so long. All my years of casting SA Dota have prepared me for games like this. These are just wars, you know? Anytime OG's playing is a war. And we love to see it. It's always they're always going to bring the battle time. back to you, even if they can't, right? Like the famous thing, you know, they're, they're like monkeys, right? That's what, that's what Kuroki said. They're just going to run at you aimlessly. It doesn't matter. They're just going to run into you and just keep bringing the battle. And that's why they, you know, that whole famous saying happened where it's like, we must just pick heroes that are good versus like run at you, like gyro and stuff. So yeah, it's, it's always good to just have the constant battle and Brame, their draft is definitely very battle ready always. And now they're getting this great farm, you know, focus. He did get that good time battle fury. So yeah, it's still looking pretty solid for them. Oh, he almost manages to get the roll off in time, but nope, Sox is out. The top tower is, Seb. of course, getting plinked away here by Seb. He's going to have those Greaves online and he is soon, and the Blinks ex queued yep. up. I like that. I, I actually, I like that he's going for the Greaves this game rather than going for Blink. I think it's really nice versus the Pugna, versus the Silences as well, and just more healing. They have Healing Ward, they have Greaves. It could trip up Rame's draft quite a bit if they don't find those targets on the initial go. Thompson? Skylark just uh, enjoying the view over here by the side. Does have the Ravage back up and running, but uh, do you see some movement coming out now from the side of Brame as they're headed over towards this top side of the dire jungle. They throw down a ward, hoping to get some vision. Oh. Are they going to try forcing the Roche? Okay. They have the yeah. Vlads on Skylark. They have Ooh, the Gush when they break the Lincolns, and they have the Ursa. So, okay. Be very careful. Our smoke of deceit, of course, up and running. Could see a very big RP, but look at this line that they have to cross. In fact, they get the jump first. So they'll silence up Seb, they'll knock him back. 
It's not going to be able to get in that pit as easily. Again, they still have the Ravage here. There'll be the split being committed now by No Tail. They'll go and use the Curse Crown as well. Yules is going to get used on the back line here, or rather the Panda throwing up the Tornado, but everything is just so split. Look at this. You've got Pandas running after SSA Spartan. You've got a whole fight on the back lines. Focus just can't figure out where he wants to go. He sees Seb over there. No Tail. All right, the split is over. This could work in their favor, but Thompson on the back line, hoping maybe that he can get a quick pick off, make this a little bit easier for them. There's They're no Force F yet over onto Spartan, so he is going to go down. But they'll be able to return and get themselves a kill. Now is No-Tail next to Fall. They don't have vision over here onto Thompson, but they get the roll forward over here Seb. onto Seb. Seb, he needs help. The kickback, he's just surrounded by too many of these heroes. He's not looking like he's going to survive this. Down he goes. Wish gets himself a double kill. They did buy back on Spartan for this, but now, okay, they're going to buy back now on Seb. They don't want to allow them to get this Roche. Anna needing to be a little bit careful here. We'll throw out the spin. Double damage over onto Thompson, though. He could absolutely blow up one of these supports, or maybe even a bear here. Smokescreen does get dropped. Skylark's too beefy. It's he's just, he's, he's too much of a wall for them to get through. He's just parking himself in this river outside Roche, and they're having to give a lot of respect to it. Now, no Bruce split available, since they had to use it that last time to try to get these kills, and... They're still eager, you know, that DD on tops, and he still wants to try to find something. But, yep, again, look at Skylark. Dominant rolling on into the pit. They'll get the jump, the silence. This is looking like a decent amount of damage on Skylark, but it's not enough to take him down. Again, Brambles get thrown down. Dominant should be able to roll on out. Another Illuminate getting tossed, and they have a nice position over here. Uh-oh. Skylark, you need to be careful, but without the DD, maybe not as easy to take down. They'll use that defusal, mana. though. Silence up. Oh, the Decrepify comes out. We'll be able to protect him fairly easily here, but okay, he goes off. He gets the rabbits. They immediately take out No-Tail. He is not going to be a part of this fight at all. Skylark still alive and out over here. He's going to need some assistance. Thompson, though, managing to find the opening over onto Skylark, but the Ravage is already out. Nice RP coming out from Seb as they go, and they just slice through the side of Brame here. Down goes Stoneman, and Skylark, though, he bought back. He doesn't want to let them take advantage of this fight as they chase after Ana. Wish is looking, trying to find this opening, and he is just so damn tanky. Spartan throwing up the Illuminate knows that they're all going to be around here. Does need to be careful, though. Topson aware that he's in this vicinity. And look at this big old Tide Hunter. They have nothing to cancel out this teleport coming out from that Dark Willow, but that's like all their big R buttons at this point, Vogt. Yeah, Seb finally landing the clutch RP there at the end for them to solidify the fight. And it's still, you know, Roche is still up, still quite healthy, and I think Bray might now back away, might give a little bit more respect. But there is no Magnus RP, and there is no Omni Slash, so we'll see what they do make make of that, since they don't have their Ravage on their side, too. That RP looks crazy fights. so much better than I thought it was. And we do have a Sleeping Tart now over on Topson. He did get it, okay. Yeah. It's a pretty good item in particular versus Ursa. You can just, like when he pops in rage, you just sleep him and ignore him and go back. They also can then ignore the Tidehunter in a lot of situations. So there's some there's some hidden potential. All right, look at this. There's the Ravage off. They get no tail immediately. And you can see Seb waiting patiently, looking for the opening. They're all grouped up. Topson gets the kill onto the Tide. A skewer forward over onto two. Just misses Wiss. Wish. He gets the two. Two big I ones. thought Focus yeah, was Focus. dead there for sure, but... I have no idea how he gets out, yeah. When you're too low to hit a courier, feels bad. Thompson? He's very low. I think he's fine, though. He's... He can teleport out. Yeah, he's out of there. Get a smoke, though. Oh, if he was a little bit slower, actually, on that teleport, he would have broken that smoke. Yeah. Bit of bad luck there for, for Thompson. Or good luck for Brame, depending on how you want to look at it. Yep. Big fan of actually how Wish has built, decided to build his Pugna this game. He's gone for his own Ghost Scepter, so he can always use Decrepify on his teammates. And also then he can just protect himself overall versus the Dispels, because there's a Brewmaster. So there's a lot of different ways covering and protecting himself. And then this Blink. Like if they do get the jump onto a Tide Earner, let's say with Omni, he can get those Decreps off as the initiation. No right. tail. Yeah, the split gets used here, but Sox are taking a lot of damage. They'll turn right back around, though. They'll get the kill on Stoneman, and he's going to buy back. Again, Skylark, he's a big tanky boy, so they're just trying to ignore him, and they're just ripping apart these pandas here. They want to get rid of No-Tail, if possible, and they're just leaving Skylark kind of high and driver on the back end. Looks like he's going to be able to survive. Gets the Ravage off as they'll follow up Thompson. He was hunting. He wanted Wish, but he's not going to be able to get it because it looks like Focus won't be able to collect himself a kill here. Brambles will hold him into place, but Stormin, oh, he's hungry. He wants that kill on No-Tail. Focus just running around. A big old angry bear here. Throws out the end right. Chases after him. Chases after Soxa. Wish is going to be the one who gets the kill to crapify over on the side the roll from stoneman and the kick back over 
of the life drain? This is a dead Anna if I've ever seen one. And now Seb, he looks like he's gonna be the next one to fall, despite the fact he's using his bullwhip, trying to get out. That is a double kill now for Focus. And that's gonna be the Roche. Great fights coming out from Brave. I mean, Stominen is doing so much work on this Earth Spirit. He's catching, he's pretty much the entire catch for the team, it feels like, and he's he's getting the right ones every time. It's it's really good stuff coming in. Also, just wish these quick little decreps, quick ways to reset the fight. Yeah, really solid ways of fighting here from Brame and OG. They're not able to battle back. You know, Sab having to use that buyback in the last uh, team fight overall, it's really stagnated his growth. He doesn't have the Greaves finish. Now he got the blink after the fight finished. So just positioning is just really difficult for OG to take any of these fights and just get a good start of the fight. Brame can just walk in, let the Tidehunter give all the information in the world, and then his team picks apart the targets. I mean, it helps when you're a big beefy lad that no one can kill. Yeah. This makes things very difficult. Now he's got a blink dagger. I don't even think he needs it, honestly. I think that he can still just waltz on in with his face. But now he can... It, it's... It's just really clever the way that they're actually doing it, because in a lot of games as a Tidehunter, when you're playing versus Jug, you have this fear that mm -hmm. you can just, you get omni you die in the Omni, and you can't Ravage, right? Because right. the Omni's going on. But the fact that they have this Pugna, with the way that the Wish is playing and the way that he built, he always has the cover. He will always be able to blink, protect his Tidehunter. So this is just a good display of them understanding the way that they wanted to play the game, and they're delivering right now. You know, 4K advantage, OG looking pretty hurt at the moment. This is not looking good here for Sox as he gets found by Focus and Stominen. He's not going to be able to teleport out. And down goes the Dark Willow. Unstoppable Ursa. Almost has his Basher finished up now too. He's a big old bear, that's for sure. Top lane, they see tops and they want this kill. They'll knock him back. They throw out the gush and uh, down he goes. Stomin just feels like he's everywhere. I swear, I was just like, he just was bottom, and then he just hop again for the next kill. He's, yeah, he's doing a great job on this. He, There's a reason that they first picked him. He made a big splash, I would say, last season here in the uh, European DPC. He, I think he gained a lot of fans, honestly. He is a very aggressive player. He, I mean, that's, you know, we joke that we see teams with SSA Spartan. He's usually the most aggressive, uh, but he's just very good at his positioning, and he made such incredible plays last season. So this does not surprise yeah. me, honestly. His Earth Spirit is excellent. He was he was absolutely the standout for me. Him and Wish were the two that were just really surprising me with some of their moves. As on a bottom, mm -hmm. they do get uh, they, the Bash connection. Teleports are coming out as well here. You've got Seb nearby. The roll through coming out from Stone and then followed up with a beautiful Blink Ravage. They do manage to get the split off, but Seb pushing all the way back over here uses the RP. It doesn't seem to do a whole heck of a lot as Illuminate is going to get tossed out. And Skylark will go down. He already got the Ravage off. Focus will go down. Oh, they are Stominant far from their is, team. They're a little far. They're a little bit too deep here as down goes Stominant. And now Focus is just trying to focus on someone. Just going to hit off over here on the Dark Willow with the Skewer right back again. He'll punish them for diving just a little bit too far here. And Spartan says, oh dear God, please. I don't want Topson to find me. Topson, though, his spidey sense is tingling. He's looking for him. He's doing a little bit of peekaboo here in the trees, but he's not going to be able to find him. Not this time. And just like that, the game state returns to being pretty comfortable and pretty okay for oh. OG, just in one quick fashion. <laughs> the RP bringing them completely out of range, and I mean, we're going to uh, keep watching Spartan because yeah, he's, he's found. He's trying Body so blocks. hard, but look at this tops and the blinks right forward. Decrepify does come out from Wish. They're going to try oh. to teleport him out, but not going to be able to do it. Now, Wish needs to be careful that he doesn't just chain feed here. So I do use the bull whip on him, slows him down a tiny bit, but that Pugna, he is a very fast fella. Getting, a, I mean, they got a little too over eager, it feels like. <laughs> they dove past the tier one, get skewered into tier two, RP'd, and then it's I mean, dream, dream place for OG to fight, really. You can't make mistakes like this against OG. They are 100% yeah. going to punish you, so. You can't make mistakes like that. You have to be cautious. You know, you're playing into a Manta Jug. Like, even the small things, right? Like, Ana, I believe he, like, Manta dodged the rolling boulder, which allowed him to get out of range of the Ravage, which then caused this whole spiral of events that allowed OG to just dominate that fight. And like we said, just in a comfortable spot now, because Jug, he's top Ooh. net worth with the Scotty and a Talisman of Evasion. He is indeed, but this is not looking super great here for Topson. The rolling coming out from Stolmanen, the life drain. Down goes Topson. So doing a bit of his own dive here. <laughs> Just standard tops in making space yeah. in a very, very bizarre place, but and a very tops in way. Yep, we love him for it. We do indeed. 
So yeah, it's uh, it's been a very tight game. Uh, were you expecting it to be this tight? I mean, Brame just had a huge window where they could really take over the game. This last moment just completely switched everything. Like Ana is just totally back, and he has he actually has good ways to deal with like BKBs and sticking on targets. It, it's completely shifted. I, I didn't expect to see this from Brame, but I also was very reluctant to just jump on the OG train. It's been it's been some time since they played with him. Ooh. They had had some rough situations too. As now, RP Skylark. RP Skylark. He's oh, he almost manages to get out, but down he goes. Spartan now running for his life. He's gonna have to leave Stolman in behind here. As no tilt will turn back around, or rather, focus is uh jumped in over here. Stolman and rolling forward. Just a couple of these nice hits off. Those greaves coming in handy. Focus. Still trying to run away. The Bramble's holding them into Here. place. No tail. Oh, but look at this wish. He's got to be the little battery who keeps him alive. As Stoneman does indeed get left behind, he is going to be the sacrifice. But they do manage to get focus out. We're seeing they're, they're, they're just throwing RPs. They're throwing Omnis on the tide now. They're seeing how important he is. And mm. this time, Wish was not in range to get the decrep. Nowhere near, actually. Soji now starting to get their own footing, starting to get some actual map control too, rather than playing on defensive. No tail buys a gem. So these sentries, these wards. This is a dead spot. It's gonna get difficult for Bremen. Yeah, Spartan. Rest in peace. Is pieces. But, pieces, uh, true. Yeah. Down goes this middle tower, though. You don't have stamina up. You don't have your tide hunter. So you just let this one go. And yeah, I mean, on his build is all. It's all kicking together. He's five one and eight this game. The Scotty really good versus the, these little heals that are coming out from their team, and now just Butterfly. Straight up counter versus the Ursa, as he's gonna have to go all the way into an MKB to be able to hit him, even though he has Basher. He has to go for a completely different item than just finishing it up to Abyssal. Yeah, he just went and he switched around his build too, the second yeah. he said that, because he has to, absolutely has to. You, yeah, it's, like it's Butterfly and the Elven Tunic, so yeah. it's just like, you're not gonna do anything. And you are about counteracting the Jug at this point. The Ursa has to start being that one to deal with him, because he's just, he's really getting out of control. <laughs> and now, this downtime. The OG, they're a very, they're a team that really does rely a bit on ultimates, with the way that they've set themselves up in the draft, but... Look at this downtime. The ults are all just ticking, and Brame is just locked on their side of the map, unable to really do much of anything. So next fight that Brame looks to take, OG's gonna have everything available again. Are they starting to lose their window now, is my question. It's it's really starting to feel like it. This Pugna, he's starting to feel just not as strong at all. The Tidehunter is, is killable, and we're seeing this control. The Magnus, the Willow, even the Brewmaster just running these, uh, these Brewlings into the back lines and scouting. It's a bit too much for Brame to deal with now. We do have the Blink Dagger picked up on Ursa now, so perhaps we can see something like a pickoff, but they're moving as five here, in fact. They go, they drop a ward immediately. Here's Spartan backing off the roll forward, though. They're going to try to just take out No-Tail, and down he goes immediately. But the follow-up is coming in the here gem. as they turn, and they have an idea. Okay, follow up here with the Ravage Blink forward. They'll be able to go. They take down Seb. They managed to almost take down Topson, not quite yet. Looks like he's going to be able to survive that, but this Dark Willow's not looking very healthy as Saxa does indeed go down. Tops are going to be kept alive by the uh, humble god's healing ward here. And they, they got the gem. Like, that was no tail. He just purchased that gem. They Oof. immediately get it. Stolman in with a very beautiful roll, catching him up, kicking him up on the high ground. Oops. And now OG, Oops. they did keep Stolman the two in. big ones alive, but... Spots out Topson here and Ana, but that sleeping dart will only prolong this tower a little bit longer here, guys. This bear is going to get back up, and he's going to be angry. No Rose Shop available, though. They didn't get to get the Tier 2 either. So they did get three he three heroes killed, but now their OG's back up in full force with their ults. And there is no Ravage, so we have to expect OG. The bottom lane is in a decent spot. Mid, they're pushing out. I think there's it's likely that they might look for some type of smoke, mo smoke movement here. So yeah, we see that again. The Blink Dagger coming out clutch for focus. This actually was a pretty good pickup, so he can follow up with the Ravage and get those insta-kills during it, rather than going for the MKB <laughs> that will take some time. Some big smiles yeah, going we're seeing on the excitement. There. I like it. Yeah. Huh? And OG, they're in. As we said, ulti's down. Ravage is not up. OG trying to get something big out of it here. Doesn't look like they've managed to go and get any kills, but they have managed to collect some of that uh, map presence again here as they took over the triangle. But again, focus bottom lane. Just continue to farming up. But it does feel, uh, again, it's been a very tight game this entire time. Less mm -hmm. than 1k net worth difference. Look at that. Well, Stomina needs to be careful. Stomina. He's kind of stuck on the little, uh, the pseudo cliff. 
Well, good thing he got stuck on. If you've rolled even like just a little yeah. bit further, he was landing right in front of a jug and a Magnus. As No Tail is just sitting smoked inside the pit, just waiting and waiting. There's a double damage bomb. Biding his time. Oh yeah, Focus is right by that too. Yeah, I hope he. Yeah, I think he sees it. Yeah, there we go. All right, it's go Ravage time. Ravage in twenty. They still don't have Ravage though, so Skylark. Skylark? He needs to be careful. Oh, the blink away. They know they're hanging out around the pit. Got a big angry bear with Basher and BKB. They'd love to get in there if possible, but like you said, they've got to wait for that Ravage. I don't think you want to Starting be... Starting to get back up. Five seconds, they can start looking to go. They oh, know there's a ward there, too. Thompson trying to just clean up on Stoneman. Immediately, they follow up with the Decrepify. The and BKB. that is the BKB, Focus. though. And the double damage. Nice RP coming up from some of the follow-up with the Ravage. And it just barely clips them at the very edge of this here. Stoneman buys back. Illuminate comes up. They're not finding a great position right now. This is looking really bad here for Wish as he's caught in the middle of everything. does have an Aeon just, though. He's going to be all right with Stoneman. He's taking too much damage. He just fought back. He can't afford to go down here. Wish goes down. Stoneman goes down. They don't have the Ravage. Spartan now trying to run for his life as Sky Skylark also just leaving the area. Oh, the jump forward. They want this kill on the Coddle, and they're going to be able to get it. It's a double kill now for Thompson. And Focus. Oh, Focus. He's chasing after a fairy, and he can't quite get his claws on her. But you know what? No Tail will be able to get the kill on the bear. Oh, my God. As, yeah, they're going to tip him for sure. Like, as soon as that BKB gets popped, he is so screwed. Like, they have so much control for him. Like, with the RP, after the RP's finished, they just ignored him. They just threw him up in the air. No Tail just keeps throwing him up again in the second Cyclone. Then the Soxo also gets to control him, and this Ursa can do nothing at that point. A phenomenal fight by OG, and now we're seeing the real big damage. As Stominin buys back, he dies. They lose the gem that they recovered, and they're going to lose the Roche. Oof, that was that was a brutal one. It was and the way that they take it too, it's the way that he skewers, like he RPs and instantly skewers, because I think he knew Skylar was gonna blink and ravage, so he tried to pull the fight out of that vicinity for a second, and it, it worked. Ooh, Topson going in deep here. They want this kill on Spartan. They're just gonna push him right back over into the arms of OG. Down he goes. So that was your uh, one of your forms of wave clear that has just been ripped away from you quite viciously, and there's no way that Wish wants to go anywhere near it. And now you're playing versus two super carries with RP. Uh, they are with um with the empower. And now they're just cleaning up these racks, going toward the top side too. Oh, the jump forward. They're hoping maybe they can clean up no tail. They'll kick him back. And there's a little dig into the face, so they'll be able to take down no tail. But they've already lost some of these buildings. And the pressure is on 11 k net worth lead. They'll take another tower on their way out. Feeling pretty powerful right now. Yep. They got what they came for. No Tail never cares dying. He got Philly, you know, earlier in the game. Who cares dying when you have Philly? <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so they're going to go for Heaven's Halberd now. They just picked that up on Tidehunter. Anything he can get to try to survive right. through at least like an Omni or just any type of small little survival things. It's, it's really getting out of control. The game has gotten quite out of hand. Too much control. Too many different forms that OG have. When they have all their ults, it just, it really feels impossible for Brayman. This is where Pugna really starts to fall off, right? Like, it's right. been like that for quite some time, is the game just gets really difficult to play as a Pugna when you're playing into all of this. You have to be so perfect about your positioning, one little trip up, and you're just a very squishy little skeleton. I mean, I have to say that he has been very, very well positioned in a lot of these fights, though. They just have a lot of really good ways of closing those gaps. And eventually, you know, everybody starts to run away when the fight starts to go sideways. And then poor Pugna's trying to run out. And he sometimes gets left behind. It's usually Stolmanen, right, who ends up being uh, the sacrifice. But he is also very in the faces of all of them. Oh, and I actually did say that they were able to recover the gem on the side OG. They actually didn't. That was my apology. I think the courier is something else got it. Because and he actually still has it. So at least they have that going for themselves. You know, they're going to know they're not under ward coverage for the most of the time. And they'll be at least able to spot the Ricky in a lot of these situations. Well, the MKB is now completed for the Ursa. So we'll see how much of a difference that's going to make. Let's see, is working on the Abyssal Blade as well. I'm just concerned that... Uh, it's just going <laughs> to... Look how fast he's sitting. Oh, dear Lord. Yeah, this jug is just... Uh, look at this armor. 50 armor. Look at the Solar Crest and the Greaves behind him. He's an absolute beast. And even he's holding onto the Paladin Sword in the backpack in case he sees situations where he's going to be able to swap him in. Well, the rest of OG was playing Dota. Anna was studying the blade. <laughs> no, he really was. <laughs> Six and one and 11. You know, he made the one little trip up where he did die, but besides that... I think he's allowed one. 
The jump He's in, clean. though, the yeah. push back immediately over here onto the Ursa. That is not the place he wants to be oh right now. They so even go God. and use the Terrorize. He's just dead. Down for 89 seconds. Towers yeah, just is getting get chopped away. into a different continent. <laughs> Feels bad, man. Down goes the tower. Man. The racks are going down. Spartan is just too forward here as he uh, is going to get saved here for a moment, but I'm sure as soon as that wears off, he is dead. Ana is just this running at them now. Sleeping Dark getting tossed out here by Thompson. I'll get a roll out, be able to go do a life drain, but he doesn't seem to care. He's got an Aegis. This, this dart is super annoying. The cast range is so far. Like, it, it actually is really obnoxious and allows his team to set up for plays like Skewer, which, bam, there we go again. Okay, well, it looks like they might be able to get the kill on Thompson, but Stalmanen was just pushed too far out here. Oh, this is not looking good now for the tie charge. He's trying to get himself into the base, and No-Tails Pandas are just running in full force right GG. now, which is Aeontis comes out, and the GG does indeed get called. So OG will be taking game number one of this series. Hey, Brave, they brought, they brought the battles back early on in the game, but you could definitely see OG just a little bit more comfortable with their draft of how they wanted to take the fights and just really identify